And welcome back. You are on the money. It's 1.36. Now, it's been a while since many of us have been abroad with COVID restrictions limiting foreign travel. But if you are lucky enough to be jetting off to the sun this summer, you might need to renew your passport. And in the unlucky instance, your passport is, is delayed and you miss your trip, it turns out you may be entitled to claim the partial cost of your holiday and compensation if you paid for premium or fast track service with a Manchester's passport office. Well, Paul Briston, founder of the law firm Britain and Time, can tell us more. Paul Britton, great to have you in the show. I am. Tell us about this service. I can get money back. You can get money back. It's unfortunate you can't get it on the standard service. I mean, what they quote is that it's up to a 10 week turnaround. But when you pay for the fast track or the premium service, they guarantee a turnaround time. For the fast track, it's a five day. And for the premium, it's a one day turnaround. Now, if they don't get your passport back to you in those timelines, then you would be entitled to compensation, either for the rearrangement of flights, let's say the passport arrives just a day after your flights, and you're able to rearrange it, then they'll pay for the, the cost of the rearrangement. Um, if you do lose your entire holiday, then that's a different claim, um, and you could have your entire holiday paid for you in compensation. Key question, how much is it to do the fast track thing and the premium thing compared to the normal thing? So the standard... Scientific ter terms. <laughs> You're trying to catch me out. So the, the standard term is, uh, is around £70. Yep. Um, but like I said, no guarantee. Yep. The fast track, 140 And the premium service, which is the one day turnaround, is £177. Big difference. £170, £140. If you want to be sure you've got your passport for your holiday. That's it's a, a big difference. And, and, like you and might... even then, you might not get it. You might then go through the rigmarole of compensation. That's, that's right. I mean, we're seeing a lot of these claims coming yeah. through, through now. Um, partly because of um, the COVID, the lockdowns, and even the vaccination rollout. You've got to get so many vaccinations before you can go to certain locations. People are quick to book their holidays, but not quick to check the expiry date on their passport. Indeed, indeed. They pick it up, they see that it's either expired, expiring, or perhaps while they're away. And some of these destinations that they go to, uh, you need to have a passport for at least six months of validity. Yeah, that's right. Um, so we're seeing an influx of these applications, which again is putting pressure on HM Passport Office. Key question number two, once you've put in a submission under the standard service, can you then upgrade it to a faster service? I don't know the answer to that. You'd have to ask the Passport Office. I mean, that is, I mean, because some people rather than, mm. I mean, just the psychological impact of missing your holiday in, in some senses, even if you do manage to get full compensation for the amount of money you've spent, mm. It's still not the same, is it? Because I shouldn't think you could upgrade. Yeah. You could probably make a separate application, but then you'd be paying the fee again. And oh, okay. you try to seek a refund of your standard service. Yeah, that's interesting. That's if, interesting. if they fail on the fast track or the premium service, yeah. they will refund the difference between yeah. the standard service and the premium one. So is your firm Britain and Time, right? Britain and Time solicitors. Yeah, yeah are, you, are you specifically trying to help people to get through this rigmarole? We offer fixed fee consultations, so we, we can normally deal with it that way. Um, it's not very cost effective to use solicitors, yeah. unless, of course, there is a significant loss. Yes. Um, in that case, then you should always get independent legal advice. Can you claim that back from the passport office? Unlikely they'll meet that cost. There are circumstances, if they're extreme and the losses are substantial, where they would consider that sort of claim as well. It's kind of mad, isn't it? We're one of the most advanced countries in the world and people are, may or may not get their passport it's, it's in just 10 the, weeks. It's I mean, the exceptional circumstances, isn't it, with the backlog um, and processing so many applications and so many people wanting to go away. I mean, do, do, do you see, is it getting better? Do you see any light at the end of the tunnel or is it the light of an oncoming train of even more delays? There's always light here <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the tunnel. It's um, Friday, there's always yeah, light. Yeah, there's always light. Uh, but they have increased the standard turn turnaround time. It was four weeks, six, eight, and now they're up to 10 weeks. So it looks like it's getting worse. Blimey. Well, Paul Britton of Britain and Times Listers, thanks a lot for coming into you, the Liam. studio. The advice you've given our viewers. Great. It's great to have you with us. But what a difficult situation. You book a holiday, you don't know if you're going to get your passport. Crikey. Now, the backlog of passport applications may point to inefficiencies in parts of our civil service, not least the passport office itself. Yet Boris Johnson yesterday ordered ministers to cut more than 90,000 civil service jobs with the aim of freeing up three and a half billion pounds to ease the cost of living crisis. But the announcement was described as either another headline grabbing stunt or a reckless slash and burn to public services by the FDA, the Civil Service Union. 
Well, to discuss this, I thought I'd call on friend of the show, Vicky Price.